All right, hello everybody. Uh, my name is Dr. Patrick Wilbur, and I am a uh, professor in the math department at the University of Akron, and I'm here today with this short video to tell you a little bit about studying applied mathematics at Akron. Uh, I wish we could be meeting face to face and I could be talking to you in person, but um, that's not how the world's working these days, so uh, instead I'm going to show you this video. So, the, like I said, the main thing I want to talk about is uh, the Applied Math Bachelor's of Science uh, at the University of Akron. Uh, but the first thing I want to talk about, a little bit more general, is if you're watching this video, then you're probably thinking about maybe being an Applied Math major when you go to college or go to university. So I want to talk about why you would want to be an Applied Math major. Um, and while some of the reasons are probably kind of obvious, you like math, okay? If you didn't like math, you probably wouldn't be thinking about majoring in math. Also, you're probably pretty good at math, because if you weren't good at math, you probably wouldn't like it that much. Um, so those are kind of two obvious reasons. And another reason which maybe you haven't thought about too much, but I would encourage you to start thinking about, is you want to get a good job when you graduate from college. Okay? Uh, so that then suggests the question, which is, who hires math majors? All right? What sort of jobs can you get? when you have a degree in applied mathematics? And there's a great answer to that question, and it's really good news if you're thinking about being a math major. The answer is that just about everybody hires math majors. Uh, math majors get hired, obviously, you know, one thing you might think of immediately is, is teaching, because most of the people you know probably right now that have degrees in math are teachers, your teachers at, at high school. Uh, but teaching in high school, teaching at, uh, uh, at, uh, at lower grades below high school, or teaching uh, at, at the university level, all those people that, that teach math obviously have degrees in math. Um, and if you want to teach sort of beyond high, at a level beyond high school, then you typically need uh, an advanced degree in math, either a master's degree or a PhD. Um, but also, um, math majors get hired by many, many different companies in different industries. Um, uh, often, companies hire math majors not even for their specific mathematical skills. Uh, but just because math majors typically tend to be good problem solvers, and uh, industry always needs people that are good at solving problems. Uh, and then uh, a third category of people that who hire math majors are government, uh, different levels of government, federal government, state governments, even local governments. Um, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail here, but I would encourage you, uh, when you have some free time, uh, to Google something like, what can I do with a math degree? And there are many, many excellent sites that will uh, talk about in detail different possible career opportunities that one can pursue, say, with a bachelor's in mathematics, and also give you an idea of what you can expect uh, to make um, when you have such a job, okay, which is an important thing to think about. Um, I will mention before I leave this that uh, just to sort of illustrate the diversity of different uh, employers uh, who hire students with applied math degrees, I'll, I'll tell you a few places where some of our recent uh, graduates from Akron, from the Akron's math program, have gone on to work. So we've had a lot of our students go on um, to work in different local school districts as teachers. Uh, and even at a higher level, we have students that now teach at Ashland University, uh, Kent State University. We have some of our uh, graduates come back and, and teach for us at Akron. Um, we have somebody now that's uh, uh, teaching up at Cleveland State University. In terms of industry, some of our graduates have gone on to work, uh, uh, so for example, Equity Engineering Company, which is a, an engineering company up in Cleveland, American Greetings Cards, which is a greeting card company up in Cleveland. We have some graduates uh, that are working there. Um, larger companies, IBM, Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company. Um, a lot of our recent graduates have gone into the financial planning industry or the banking industry or the retirement planning industry. Uh, so we have Students, uh, former students now that are working at KeyBank, for example, uh, other students working at Nationwide Insurance or Prudential Insurance. Um, in terms of government employment, uh, we currently have graduates that work uh, at the Federal Reserve Bank of Cleveland um, and um, a U.S. Department of Defense, and also we have a graduate that works at Los Alamos National Lab. Okay? So just to give you a flavor of the sort of um, places that our graduates uh, go on to work at. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about are just some uh, basic statistics about our department. So we currently have about 15 what are called tenured or tenure track um, faculty. These are people like me that are in the tenure system that are long-term employees of the department. Uh, we also have uh, roughly 15 what we call NTT faculty, non-tenure track faculty, but these are people that are not in the tenure system, uh, but they uh, are on contract and typically they 
worked for the department for many years and they're, they're dedicated full-time employees, employees and they're usually all, always excellent teachers. Um, we currently have roughly at the university about 100 math majors, approximately, uh, plus or minus a few. Um, many of those majors are actually double majors. Um, so we have a fair number of students that double major in uh, one of the engineering fields in applied mathematics. Uh, we have students that might double major in one of the natural sciences like chemistry or physics uh, with applied mathematics. Um, students that are interested in uh, ed education, typically uh, uh, like K through 12 education, will get a double major uh, in, in education along with mathematics uh, if they want to go to teach uh, math at that level. Um, also, just to mention, we have uh, a minor in, 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 in applied math and math. So if you end up coming to Akron and decide you don't want to do the math major, but you choose some related field where you end up taking a lot of math classes, then you're probably a good candidate without taking too many extra classes to pick up the math minor, which you might want to do. Because again, if you like math and you're good at math, you might want to take some upper level math classes anyhow, even if it turns out not to be your major. Okay. Uh, so now coming to the sort of the main thing I want to talk about today, uh, I want to talk about the requirements uh, for the math degree, the actual coursework that you have to complete to get the applied math degree at Akron. Uh, but before that, let's talk about requirements more general. Uh, when you go to college or when you go to a university, there's typically three levels of requirements that you have to satisfy. There are university-wide requirements, uh, which at Akron go by the name of, of general education classes. Or, or if you're in the honors program at Akron, you'll do instead what's called the honors distribution. And these are just, uh, uh, as you might expect, you have to choose certain classes off of certain lists that are uh, in different categories. Uh, and the point is to make sure that you graduate from the university as sort of a well-rounded, broadly educated person who can go out and be a good citizen and has more knowledge than just the specific knowledge of your major. Um, uh, so then in addition to university requirements, there are college level requirements. Uh, if you come to Akron and you study applied mathematics, then uh, you will be uh, in what's called the College of Arts and Sciences, because that's the college at the university that houses the math department. Uh, and the as a member of the College of Arts and Sciences, you'll have to satisfy what's called the 40-hour rule, which means you have to take uh, 40 credits of upper-level courses in the College of Arts and Sciences, which typically you end up sort of doing naturally just by pursuing your degree requirements. Uh, and also you have to take four semesters of a foreign language or possibly sign language. Okay, that's, that's a requirement of the, of the Arts and Sciences College. Okay, now coming to the actual requirements for the applied math degree, I've listed them down here in the lower half of the board. Okay, so uh, on the top line here, the thing circled in green, this is sort of the, the foundational material for applied mathematics, and it's the material that you're gonna cover in your first couple of years uh, when you're pursuing your degree, the freshman and sophomore years. So sort of the basis of everything is the calculus sequence, and in Akron, we have calculus one, two, and three. And each of those courses is a four credit course, so that's 12 credits, and you would take those during your freshman and sophomore year, your first two years at the university. Uh, and like I said, that's kind of the basis of everything that's gonna happen later. Uh, two other sort of fundamental classes, uh, one is called the introduction, one is called introduction to differential equations. Uh, whatever a differential equation is, you probably don't know at this point, but it's, uh, it's it, these are things that come up naturally whenever you study mathematically problems in science and engineering. Somehow, most of the laws of nature uh, tend, to, tend to take the form of um, differential equations, okay? You'll study that. Uh, basically, you take that class after you take Calc 3, so it's sort of like Calc 4. Uh, and then another class, uh, another sort of fundamental class, is called Introduction to Linear Algebra. Uh, linear Algebra, that class starts off with the study of systems of linear equations, which you get a little bit of exposure to in high school, uh, but starting from that point, it, it leads into a whole sort of uh, beautiful and natural theory, which turns out to be uh, fundamental for most of the other topics that one studies in applied mathematics. Okay, okay then the next two classes here uh, that we require you to take for the math degree, uh, Applied Stats and Introduction to Computer Science, these are more just to make sure you have, um, so these aren't specifically math courses, but they're to make sure you have some exposure to things that anybody that has a math degree should know. Um, should have some basic uh, um, familiarity with uh, computers and how to program, and you should have some, base, some knowledge of some basic statistics. Okay, okay now um, this next class listed here, Fundamentals of Advanced Mathematics, or FOAM for short. 
This is the class that's going to help you make the transition from these uh, classes that you take during your first couple of years, which are pretty computational, pretty much, uh, as the name calculus suggests, the goal is to, is to calculate things. Okay? Uh, but it's going to help you transition from those sort of courses to uh, more theoretical upper level courses, the courses that I'm going to discuss in a minute, which are listed down here. So this is, this is the design to get you from here down to here. And it's going to give you a basic introduction to uh, proving things, because a lot of upper level mathematics involves uh, proving uh, different results. Okay? And you don't really get a lot of exposure to that in these, these basic classes. Okay, so once you've taken foam, now you're ready, sort of ready to start your upper level classes. Uh, so there's a sequence of two classes called Applied Numerical Methods 1 and 2. Um, these basically teach you certain algorithms that could be implemented uh, on a computer to solve a lot of basic problems that come up in applied mathematics. Um, and then you'll take a class called Introduction to Mathematical Modeling, which teaches you how to describe different problems in science and engineering in a mathematical way to build what's called a mathematical model, because once you have a mathematical model, then you can actually use all this math that you know to study those problems and translate that math back into uh, information or knowledge about uh, the problems, the scientific problems. Okay. And then once you've taken those, I, okay, so I, I missed one thing. Go back here. Uh, I, miss, I kind of missed this guy here, sorry. Um, Advanced Calculus 1 is also an upper level class that you're going to make, or going to take, and in, in Advanced Calc 1, uh, you're going to learn why all this stuff that you studied in calculus is correct. So here you're going to, when you take calculus, you sort of learn how to use certain results, calculate things, but Advanced Calc 1, you're going to learn why those results are true. This, this is a very theorem proof oriented course, um, and after you take Advanced Calc 1, then you have to take either Advanced Calc 2, which you probably would do if you liked Advanced Calc 1, but honestly some students don't like it so much. So another option is they take what's called complex variables, and that's sort of the, a cal the calculus of, of functions of complex variables. So maybe you don't know what that is yet, but uh, it, it's a, this, this sort of class is a little bit less theoretical, uh, and so sometimes students that didn't like Advanced Calc 1 will do that second option. Okay, okay so you got to do that, you got to talk about that, talk about that guy. Uh, so then the last thing for the applied math degree is you have to take 15 credits of upper level electives. Um, six, of the, six of those credits have to be in what we call an approved applied area. So this will be a sequence of classes either in like statistics or engineering or one of the natural sciences or even social sciences like economics. Uh, they're not math classes per se, but they're supposed to be classes that have a fair amount of mathematical content. Okay. So you, you get exposed to some area where math is actually being applied, uh, which seems important if you're going to be an applied math major. And then uh, the other 15 of the upper level credits really can be in any nine upper level classes. And really, this is just built in to make sure that you satisfy this 40-hour uh, this rule of the college. Okay. So those are the applied math degrees described briefly. Um, so two related things. One, one natural question you might have is, well, if I come to Akron, where do I start? Uh, depending, it depends what you had in high school, so a lot of students uh, who didn't take any calculus in high school, uh, or even who did take, say, Calc 1 in high school, will still start at Calc 1 uh, when they come to Akron. Um, maybe if you're even a little, um, uh, <clears throat> didn't get to calculus, you might even start in pre-calculus at Akron, that's fine. Um, but some students uh, who've taken calculus in high school, or in particular students that have taken AP Calc and done well in the exams, uh, might be able to, to pass over Calc 1 and start at Calc 2, or even start at, uh, at Calc 3. Um, and so ultimately that will be based on, where you, where you start will be based on what you took in high school, and also um, maybe your ACT scores, or if you want, you can come and take the placement test here uh, to figure out where you should start. Um, another thing, so when you first come to Akron, you're going to be assigned an advisor. This will be like a university or college level advisor. And this person will be very good at helping you make sure you're getting the correct classes to satisfy the gen ed requirements or the honors distribution. If you're in the honors college, you'll get an advisor from the honors college. Um, but very early on at your time at Akron, if, you're, if you know you're going to be an applied math major, uh, then you should contact, come to the department and say, I need to get a, an advisor in the, in the math department. And that'll be a faculty member in the math department like myself who will start to help you uh, pursue the correct course of study to make sure that you're going to complete all these guys. Okay? The, the, the university level advisors are good at the university level stuff, 
But for the math stuff, specific stuff in your major, you should get an advisor that's in that field. Um, and in particular, uh, when you do get an advisor in the math department, we'll sit down with you and we'll fill out what's called the departmental contract, which is basically just sort of a game plan. That It's a piece of paper that has all these courses listed on it, and then we'll fill it out and we'll, we'll say tentatively when you plan to take each of these courses. And that's just to make sure that you have a viable game plan uh, to say, I want to graduate uh, in this semester. Uh, make sure you have a game plan that's going to get you from now to that semester and everything's done and you can graduate. Okay. Um, I will leave you with uh, three final things. Well, four final things, but they're all quick. Um, first is the department has a pretty good track record of <coughs> doing research with undergraduates. Um, so if you think at some point you might be interested in doing a research project, you really wouldn't consider that until you, you started your upper level classes you're, after you've been to Akron for a couple of years. Uh, then you, you would get in touch with a specific faculty member and express that interest and see what sort of projects are available. And that's, it's, a, it's, it's a fun thing to do and it's a good thing to do especially if you're thinking about going to graduate school in math because it'll, it'll give you a feel for what it's like to actually do research um, in mathematics before you commit yourself to graduate school. Uh, second thing I want to mention is that the department and the university overall really recognizes the importance of doing co-ops and internships uh, during your uh, time of study at Akron. So uh, if that's something that you're interested in, then again, that's something you would start to think about maybe after your sophomore year, then you, you should get in touch with uh, faculty members in the math department and see how we can help you make that happen. Um, third thing I'll mention is we have at the university what we call our five-year BS MS program. This is a five-year program where you can get both your bachelor's of science in applied math and your master's of science in applied math in five years. Typically that would take six years if you just did a four-year bachelor's and then went to graduate school. It would typically take then another two years to get your master's degree. But we have a way, uh, we built a program where you can do it in five years. A lot to think about maybe now if you're just going into your senior year of high school, but uh, I'll just put that in the back of your mind. If that, you think that's something that might interest you, you don't really have to worry about it too much during your first couple of years at Akron. If you, if you decide to go to that path, uh, you, you have to make that decision, say, after you finish the calculus sequence and when, when you're about ready to start these upper level classes. Then, then you'll have to, uh, say, come talk to me and figure out what do I need to do to get into that five-year program. But you don't need to decide, like, day one when you show up at Akron. Um, then final point um, is I just want to leave you with my contact information. So again, my name was uh, Dr. Wilbur, and my email address is jw50 at uacron.edu. And if you have, there's going to be a question and answer section after you watch this video. Uh, I, I forget, I don't know exactly how we're doing it at the moment, but you'll have an opportunity after you watch the video to ask questions. But if uh, further on down the road any questions occur to you, uh, feel free to shoot me an email. I'm happy to answer any questions you might have, or if you want to set up uh, somewhere down the road a phone conversation to have a more extended com uh, conversation, uh, I'm happy to do that as well. Okay, so uh, that's, that's my spiel for the day, and uh, enjoy, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.